Hey everyone, this is Zach with Palantir Research. I have some breaking news regarding the NHS contract again, and this article honestly just came out late Saturday night that there are some NHS data specialists pushing back against implementing Foundry across the whole organization. And this is right after that I've covered the article with the UK consortium um, dropping out and thinking that we've increased our chances of getting this contract, but it looks like there's always something happening. So I'll go into the issues this article brings up and provide my opinion as a data analyst, which I do for my own work, because I can see some some merits here, but also a lot of holes with this article. But who knows, maybe this is a big deal and truly is a pain point for pounds here to get over. So first, we get that opening paragraph basically saying that NHS uh, data specialists are warning Palantir's rollout um, is not good for the NHS. But here's where the first oddity is, and this might be very nitpicky, but they state here that they have several data specialists familiar with the software, but then say including three specifically at the NHS are concerned about Palantir being the front runner. This is an odd way of stating the sentence where it sounds like there's a bunch of data specialists and trying to make it sound like there's a lot are familiar with Palantir, but only three of them specifically that they can point to are having this issue. They then go on to say that Foundry is not user-friendly, costly, and made it difficult to switch to different providers in the future. I have comments on all three of these actually. So user friendliness, this is very subjective statement. First of all, these analysts are trying a new workflow. And speaking from my own experience, I'm the same way. I get used to my workflow even if it's inefficient. It's efficient in my mind and being able to run it because it can be ran with no issues with full understanding on what is happening leading up to that reporting. Now, when you're using something new, there is a healthy skepticism on ensuring the outputs are being generated correctly but also unhealthy skepticism in just being lazy to switch. I'm definitely guilty of this sometimes and not accusing anyone here of that per se or of being a low performer, but always a possibility, especially with such a politically charged um, results where if this brings about huge efficiency, it could actually put their jobs at risk. Next on that second reason, they mentioned the cost, which I don't think these analysts necessarily have the full picture here. There are over 10,000 analysts across the NHS. This is from like 2021, I read. And a small change, even with 1% efficiency for each of them, adds up to huge dollars and hours. And the switching cost, I mean, that's a given when you're vying for a huge contract that goes over the whole organization. And also, what's the value in a system that sucks and you can just easily switch out of it? You know what I mean? But I get it. This is very territorial when it comes to people liking their current workflows and solutions. Maybe some built in-house that could be exposed, who knows? But moving on, they bring up senior leadership as well, being basically wooed by shiny dashboards, but analysts can't do their level of data manipulation. So I have strong opinions on this one as an analyst. For myself personally, I get it. Being able to have full control of the data from raw data per se, to transforming and ultimately producing reports with full understanding of the origins and processes in between gives you full confidence of presenting those ideas as accurate. Now, how scalable is that? Now, what I'm also a strong proponent of is common data models. You lose control of manipulations yourself and have to understand what is happening in the system built by someone else. And this can be frustrating, especially when new. But once those transition pains are done, you get a full breadth of time and confidence in a new way where you can share reports with other analysts and know fully that you are talking about the same thing. And it's funny though, because if management is wooed by their dashboard, then your sucks basically. So even if the data is the best ever, if you don't get your point across, you failed as an analyst. You honestly can't expect senior leadership to take your Excel table and be happy with that. But they put in some good quotes as well, saying that several specialists praised Foundry's visualization tools and made it easier to roll out quickly and pulling multiple sources together, which is what I just talked about with these common data models. Next, they bring up the difficult of integrating with other analytical tools. And I get this, when you're used to certain tools, the transition is hard as well. What I wonder though, is this Palantir feeding into these tools or the other way around? It would be a big issue, honestly, if Palantir cannot retrieve data from these tools easily, because that's the point of Foundry, right? Where you have to pull in disparate sources of data. However, if it's just to output from Palantir and load it into your specific analytical tool so you can look at it um, the old way that you've been doing it, that might be an issue, especially if it's already being covered by Foundry. Then the article goes on to talk about the specialists wanting an entirely open source system where source code can be easily modified, shared, and exported. I mean, open source is great and all, but it comes back to that standardization and not having to build out the tool yourself. Then they go on to also say further there's opposition because they tried to engage staff to use Foundry uh, for 50,000 pounds. They state only a small proportion of that 800 team member team though use Foundry for managing drugs with this new data usage. I definitely don't like how they didn't say a specific number and just said small 
proportion. They could be hiding a specific number here just to make the article sound better. And then lastly, closing off with the chief data analytics offer saying the NHS prefers a commercial off the shelf product and configuring that rather than building everything from scratch. I get this, government's gonna be a top down organization. They're gonna do things from their own perspective in things that are easier for them, at least on a cost wise, time wise. And yeah, that might not align with what the analysts are thinking at that level because they're doing that daily work of actually working directly with data. But like I said, this all comes down to standardization, honestly. And it sounds like that's probably the biggest issue here with disparate sources of data. I'm working with different hospitals, different patient lists, and things that are being touched manually. That compounds with these issues when you have to work with different data sources. So when you have an organization of, say, 10,000 analysts, which probably the NHS has, are there transformations leading to the same results? Is it standardized? It's a very simplified scenario, honestly, pulling from the same table with two people, right? But over a large organization, this is actually an issue. This is how errors are made, or it really slows down the process to produce reports because someone is quality checking them all the time to constantly ensure that they're replicating things the same way or making sure maybe some one-off manual thing is being carried over from all sources, right from the root of it all the way to the end report. If there's something manually happening, that can really F with the results. But yeah, this is my quick take here. I know it's breaking news right after I said that Palantir has a better chance of getting the NHS contract. But thank you for listening today and watching Palantir Research, and I'll see you in the next video.